brothers and sisters, we have entered the Holy Week. It is called Semana Santa in Spanish. And we cannot Im imagine a Filipino Holy Week, a Semana Santa, without the Siete Palabras, the seven last words. And we would like, therefore, to accompany you in this journey of seven days towards Easter with the wonderful parting words of our God who says, You are my beloved above all else. Happy Retreat! Good evening to everyone. May I invite you to begin with our prayer. And tonight, we would like to ask St. Joseph to accompany us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail, Guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, in you God entrusted His only Son, in you Mary placed her trust, with you Christ developed His manliness. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a Father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. One of my greatest fears in life is to die alone, to die abandoned, far from the people who know me, the people who love me, and the people whom I love. This is one of my greatest fears. And in 2014, it almost happened to me. I was flying back to Manila from Bacolod. It was a fine Thursday morning. Our plane just landed. As soon as the plane stopped, I stood up and got my back the plane and was walking in the corridor with all the other passengers when suddenly I felt I was having shortness of breath. I tried to stop, to catch my breath, but it seems it was not effective. I looked for the bathroom I went inside the bathroom, washed myself up, and tried to exercise deep breathing, and it was useless. And fear overcame me. What was going on? Am I having an heart attack? I slowly walked towards the baggage claim area and that thought in my mind will this be the day I will die with a lot of people around me but no one knows me everyone is a stranger and I am a stranger the fear of dying alone far from those who loved me, I thought, was about to happen. Thanks be to God that was not yet the day that God scheduled for me to return to Him. The following day, I went for a checkup and drew enough the doctor. 
decided not to let me go out of the hospital. There were a lot of tests. Finally, I had my angiogram and angioplasty and certainly it was effective because now I'm talking to you. The fear of dying alone, the fear of dying abandoned. Last March 2020, when COVID-19 came to the Philippines and pandemic began, our cities were all in lockdown and the same fear came to my mind. What if I'll be sick and I will be contaminated by COVID-19? What if it would be a severe one? What if I would find myself in the ICU intubated? alone and there is no possibility for me to be visited by my loved ones, by my converts. The fear of dying alone came back to my thought and I prayed to God, Lord, let it not happen that I be contaminated and be sick of COVID and if that would be the case, let it not be a severe one. And if it would be a severe one, let it not happen that I will die alone in the ICU. The fear of dying alone. Well, in 2007, I experienced one of the saddest moments in my life, my father died. But the way he died is not really a sad way. My father died almost 86 of age. He loved to drive. That fine Monday morning at the age of 85 plus, almost 86, he was able to do what he loved best to drive his car and bring his grandchildren to school after school he drove himself with my mother back to house they dropped by the grocery to buy fresh fish and arriving home they prepared themselves brunch and it was that moment when they were eating and sharing the meal together, two of them. My mother began to complain of something. My father began to tease her and say, don't worry about that, I'll take care of that. When he said that, he stood up and with lumping, Tagalog, teasing my mother, touched her chin and said, don't worry about that. At that moment, my father felt easy and almost lost his balance. Thanks be to God, he was able to, to support himself holding on the table and sit down and he did not fall. When he was able to recover, from that business, he decided after eating his meal, he decided to go to his room and told my mother he was just going to rest. It was 2, 2.30 in the afternoon. He went to bed, took a nap. My mother, after cleaning up and washing the dishes, she followed my father in their room and my mother also got into the bed and started taking a nap at 4 or 4 30 that afternoon my father my mother heard my father 
coughing just once. And that was it. It was a peaceful day to die for my father. He was able to do his favorite thing, drive the grandchildren to school. He was able to enjoy the last meal with my mother. And he just did his last as if he was just sleeping. It was a sad day. But it was also an experience of hope for me because I thought it's possible to die not alone. My father died in the arms of my mother. And I prayed, Lord, I hope if I have to die, let me die like my father in the arms of those who love me peacefully, able to do what I love to do, even to the last day. And I pray that would be the grace given to me. I wonder if the penitent thief who died next to Jesus, who in popular piety is named as Dismas, Though in the Gospels, he is not named. I wonder if this penitent thief died and there were relatives to witness his death, to accompany him in his last moments. Of course, we know Jesus hanging on the cross. He was abandoned by his disciples. He was betrayed by one of his apostles. He was denied three times by Peter himself. But at least his mother was there, present. Mary Magdalene and some of the women disciples were there. And the beloved disciple, according to St. John's Gospel, was there present. He was abandoned, yes, but he did not die alone, hanging on the tree hanging on the cross. I wonder, however, if the penitent thief died alone, a criminal. Probably we could, we could imagine that his relatives abandoned him. After all, he was a criminal. I wonder. And yet, to hear from Jesus those assuring words, Today, you will be with me in paradise. These words of assurance assured him that he was not alone. Jesus was with him. Amen, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. The assuring words of Jesus to Dismas, the penitent thief, the good thief, the blessed thief. Amen. I say to you, today you will be, be you will be with me in paradise. Paradise. In Greek, paradisus. In Hebrew, Pardes. It means garden. And somehow this word paradise reminds us and brings to our mind and heart the image of the garden of God, the garden of Eden. It's a garden teeming with life. It's a garden filled with life. The Garden of Eden is a garden that symbolizes right relationship, right order. In this garden, the humans walk with God. Right order, right relationship. Everyone receives what is due to him or her. Right order right relationship, 
is where no one dies before his or her death. Right order, right relationship. It means that the relationship is marked by agape, love. And the movement of this agape love is not inward coming, but outward going. In Tagalog, love is pag-ibig, not pakabig. Right order, right relationship is order and relationship that follows the pattern close, open. In the Philippines, when a baby is born, one of the child's game that the adults, especially the grandmother or the mother, would, uh, would use to entertain the baby, the infant, is close, open. The grandmother would hold the, the hands, the tiny hands of the child, the infant, and then begin to say, Close open, close open. Well, I thought it was just a child's game. When I began my ministry as a priest and began serving people in ministry, administering the sacrament, listening to their pains and hurts, I realized close open is a metaphor of life. It is the pattern with which we should be living our life. No wonder it is not sung, open, close, open, close, because life must follow the pattern, close, open. A close heart must lead to open in order to love. A close mind must learn to open in order to learn new things. A person who thinks he knows everything and there's nothing to learn, close mind, will not grow anymore, will not learn anymore, anything new. If we look at Jesus hanging on the cross, his bodily gesture follows the pattern, close open. After all, this pattern goes open. We find at the very heart of God, the Trinitarian God of love. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son to the world, that the world may have life, life to the full. When Jesus at the Last Supper gathering his disciples, broke the bread and offered the wine. He said, this is my body to be given up for you. And again with the wine, this is the chalice of my blood to be given to you. The pattern close open, the pattern and the movement of love outward going, not inward coming. The pattern that is pag-ibig, not pakabit. The pattern that is close open seems to be in the very heart of the Trinitarian God. Right order, right relationship is a relationship that follows the pattern of God. Love, not this, this. This is my body. This is my blood to be given for you. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that we may have life. God created humans in His own image and likeness to take care of His garden to take care of this right order and right relationship, to maintain and even promote this right order and right relationship in this world. 
and He's created in the image and likeness of God, we are created in the image and likeness of God to be promoters of communion. To be promoters of this communion marked by this love, by this agape, by this right relationship, by this right order. We are created in the image and likeness of God also to be stewards, to Edenize the world. It's a beautiful term that uh, Archbishop Robert Byron used in one of his reflections. Edenize the world. What does it mean? It means to turn the whole world into a place where God is rightly praised. Right order, right relationship, right way of praising the Lord. This is Eden. This is the garden of God. This is the garden entrusted to humans created in the image and likeness of God. Unfortunately, humans decided to play gods. They were not, or we were not content to be simply image of God. We wanted to be gods. We wanted to play gods. And it's when we decided to play gods, the right order, the right relationship began to be broken. Instead of Eden, right order, right relationship, there is brokenness. Instead of relationship marked with love, there is selfishness. And so we bless that garden. We have lost the right order, the right relationship. We did not trust in God's definition of what is good and evil. So instead of obeying God not to eat of the fruit of the tree of good and evil, we thought we knew better. And so we disobeyed. We played God wanted to define for ourselves what is good and what is evil according to our terms, not according to God's terms. And so the garden, which was marked by the right order, right relations, right relationship, the garden that was marked by love became a place of brokenness. It is from this place of brokenness, I believe, that this must was coming from. So as he hung upon the cross next to Jesus, he prayed to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come to your kingdom. Amen, amen, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. The assuring words of Jesus to the prayer of this penitent thief. You will be with me. Earlier, we were reflecting on paradise, the Garden of Eden, symbol of right relationship, right order. At the very heart and the very key of this right order and right relationship, this Garden of Eden is Jesus. Jesus is the very center. 
of this right relationship, of this right order. To be with Jesus is the first step to be able to reestablish that right order and right relationship. Jesus himself said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Because without me, you can do nothing. Without Jesus, it's impossible for us to establish right relationship and right order. Without Jesus, we cannot establish, sustain, and promote the Garden of Eden, the Paradise. And so the good thief, realizing what he had lost, that right relationship, that right order, because of, just like any other human being, he also decided to play gods. He also decided to play God. Before Jesus, he realized the only way for him to get back into that garden marked by right relationship and right order is through Christ. And so that prayer, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And the answer of Jesus, this day, you will be with me in paradise. I started sharing with you one of my greatest fears. And I would like to close and conclude my reflection with the same thought. But with a twist. Today, I think I'm less afraid of dying. Because when my father died in 2007, that thought of him, who is already on the other side of his existence, who is already in the other life, I thought he, knowing my fear, will surely come on the day when the Lord will take me back to himself, the day of my death. Even if I will die alone, I believe my father will be there to welcome me. And probably not only my father, because also my elder sister died already. And I pray for both of them in my Eucharistic celebration. I, and I do believe that when I pray and offer the sacrifice of the Holy Mass, and I include the name of my father and my sister in the intention, I believe that together with the people celebrating or participating in the Mass that I celebrate, in the name of the communion of saints, I believe my father and my sister also are present. So I could just imagine, it's a kind of religious imagination that when the day I will die, I believe I hope my father, my sister, for whom I offer my Mass, for who I always recall in my Mass, remember in my prayers, they will be there. And so dying will never be a dying alone for me. But then, I also realize that more than the presence of my loved ones in the afterlife, the saints, Jesus and Mary, will also be there. And since we are in the year of Saint Joseph, I thought sharing this with you 
Saint Joseph is a patron for all those who are dying. And we pray to Saint Joseph that we may be given the grace of dying a happy death. Why is that so? Imagine when Joseph died, Jesus and Mary, his spouse, were there. What a beautiful way to say goodbye to this earthly existence. The very Son of God and the Father of God there at his, at his side. So I encourage you and me to pray to St. Joseph and ask him the grace of heaven and experiencing a happy death. But then, in the light of our reflection today, dying not alone, dying with a happy death, dying because our loved ones are there, Jesus and Mary are there, not to abandon us, but to keep us company. I thought, what is the use of dying happy death if we do not live happy life? And this is my last invitation to you and me. The words of Jesus, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. That today is not only the day when we will die, that that today be every day. Let that today mean that we will always be with Christ and Christ will be at the center of this Garden of Eden life. Let today be the day and every day be that day when Jesus is with us and we abide in Christ, in Jesus, so that we not only sustain and promote this right order, this right relationship, so that every day will be a blessed day. Every day will be a day of joy. Every day will be a day of happiness because we are not alone and we will never be. We will be with Christ. We will be with our loved ones. We will be and we will belong to that Garden of Eden, to that paradise that is characterized by love, by right order, and right relationship. Today, you will be with me in paradise. It's not only an invitation to prepare for the day we will die, to die with Christ, it is also an invitation to live our daily life creating paradise here and now among our loved ones, among our family, among our community. Today, you will be with me in paradise.